that to sign. Craig can run it. I'm thinking so. Yeah. Yep, I thought you could run the meeting. Fred does get a senior. It's all you, buddy. Well, let's give it another minute and see if Fred's still throwing up. I'm glad my commissioner came to see you today. <laughs> see you today. Yeah. Isn't he such a nice guy? He's so sweet. I just can't get enough of him. Yeah. Mr. Johnson, good morning. Craig, what's he doing out there? Hi, Craig. You're muted. <laughs> You're muted. Hi, That's Craig. Fine. <laughs> That's fine. That's the way we like you. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me call Brad. It's not against the water. He's got he's got thirty seconds until he's on his time. Is Jenny on Zoom today also? No, she's no. she's at an airport flying west. And... Oh, so she's not going to be here? No, she's not going to be here. I like how you're in class. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. All right. He's here. Yeah. Well, Ron's going to be the stinky. Brad game. has entered the building. I'll be here by myself. Let's go. Keep all the germs down there. We're going to have a. Ooh. Let's go. Standing. Yeah. <laughs> Following the caravan this morning. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Huh? Did you turn that thing on? Does it work up here? It doesn't work here. Oh, doesn't it? We don't have microphones. Oh, there are not. It's there. Just a it's not to that. No, there's a microphone yeah, up there. Oh. Perfect. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It's a very slow ride in today. Yeah. Go it up here, okay. Anybody got the uh, agenda on them, right? Roll call. Craig Scott. Here. Mark Serbrett. Present. Ron Vaughn. Present. Brad Newbecker. Present. Jenny David. Yeah. David. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, I guess one one thing I talked to Tim. Okay. Karen Michaels is here to represent the library. Okay. And she didn't make the on the agenda list, but it's been my experience that she, if she comments a public comment, she may have to get a variance on the on the exceeding the three minutes. You promise? I promise. Okay. All right. Well, then, then she could probably speak within that period of time. All right. All right. Well, uh, next on the agenda is public comment. So, anything on the agenda? Um, can be. Oh, yeah, that'd be the ARPA project. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. You come up. Should we get her a seat? Maybe I'm standing row 12. So oh, come on up. So, it doesn't spread. That'd be great this year. Yeah, yeah, we got it right here. So, you got one? First time I'm inoculated, and I'm said, I'm here as Karen Michael. Myself, I am the president of the West Branch Library. I'm also Borton Township Supervisor. I can come anywhere you want. The only speaker is right there in the middle. I'm sorry, speaker. I will speak loud. I have a big mouth. Anyway, I'm here because of our library elevator. And I do know that you have, back in November, John was in and spoke to you, 
and he shared this letter. Has everyone received a copy of it or not? I believe we did. Yes, we did. Okay. Well, we had our meeting Monday night. Since our library elevator is not functional, it is unsafe, we have a major problem. That is a public building. We are in violation of the ADA. So Monday night, our board decided we have got to have it fixed. So we are moving forward. We are hoping this board can help us out. It is a public facility. We have people coming in who work there who are handicapped, et cetera. You know, we have a lab, uh, an elevator that's working properly. It was built in 81. Usual lifespan is 20 years. I think we've uh, far succeeded that. So I'm asking for help. If you look originally the bill and we're going for a repair is 89,000. Please, I know you can't flip the whole bill, okay? I understand that. But we do seriously want you to consider giving us some of your money so that we can keep our citizens and our staff healthy and safe. We do have a sign up now, don't use it. You don't know if the door is gonna open. You don't know if the door is gonna close. You don't know where you're gonna end up. Stuck in the middle. Well, we could have to close the library because of that. And we do have some employees who are not happy. So I'm here to beg mercy. Please see, Craig, I'm being real good, aren't I? <laughs> Please consider us. And the sooner we get help, better. But Monday night, made the call. And I called John yesterday. He's home. He has COVID. And I told him, we are going ahead. And when you get back, sign papers to get us repaired. We have no choice. Okay. Any questions, concerns? And of course, with our penal fine down $30,000 this year, our budget is crimped too. Is that pretty short? Craig? Yep. Are you yep. proud of Thank me, Chow? I am. Thank I you think very you much. I did that less than three minutes. Yeah. I told you I would be quite <laughs> good. I know you want out of here too. You've got plenty of things to do. And the drive was sweet coming out. I enjoyed the sunshine, had to roll windows down. <laughs> a lot. Have a great day. Thank you very much for letting me come in and talk to you. Like I said, I wear two hats as township supervisor, got a couple others, and then my library presidency. But I am just really, really upset that we are at this condition. And this has been going on for months. So if there's any way, again, I'm throwing myself at your mercy. Great, right, you'd never hear me say that. Thank you very much. I'm going to sit here for a while. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other public comment? Any public comment on Zoom? Okay. First appointment is uh, Ray Blamer, Ogemaw Transit Director. Yes, sir. I'm not going to sit down. I might not get back up out of this chair. <laughs> um, I'm here today to talk about the 2023 budget, which has to be submitted uh, by the end of this month. Um, I don't know what came up on your on your sheet first, but the first thing that I sent was the public notice. And it's, it's just a review for you. And um, it states that um, we've got $772,000 in um, capital funding that we are asking for. We're never gonna get it, but we're asking for it. So therefore it's gotta be put on the public notice. Do you have any questions about the public notice or? And then the next one is just what I've done in the past. <clears throat> this this here, I've done in the past just, just to, to break down um, what expenses are. And from last year to this year, it's about a 6% increase. Um, a majority of that was from the wage increase that we had with the new, um, <clears throat> the new union. Okay. Yes, so that was pretty extensive, really. Any questions on that, or I didn't. I, I looked it over. And I do have a copy of what I'm what I send what I'm going to send in to MDOT, the, the five or six page here. Um, and it, it's all break, breaks down the same. The only thing that's different is that on this sheet, 
I don't put the $167,000 worth of, um, oh, where is it? Worth of depreciation. I just put the 1400 because that's what it works out to. We get the depreciation and then um, less $1,400 is, is um, what do they call it? Anyway, we, we can't use it for MDOT to reimburse us our 18% for federal. And therefore, it's, it's, can't really think of the term right now. Restricted fund? Uh, well, I can tell you right now what it is. Because it's here on this next page. Ineligible expenses. So, so do you have any questions on the budget? Just, it, it is what it is. You know, we're, we make more than, uh, at this point, we're making more than and um, what we're spending, but we don't know if it's always gonna be that way. Right. And then this is the resolution of intent, which is what you need to sign. Nice. And the total estimated expenses of 1,271,000, but then that the depreciation comes off from that. Right. Mm -hmm. So do you have any questions on that at all on the budget itself? You guys have any questions? No, I don't have any. No, I'm good. So Make it complete here. on this grant, this is a 5311 operating and we get, we get them every year. Um, for the past five or six years, 18% has been the norm. That's what, that's what they pay us, 18% of our budget. For 2022, they have added in, and it's called Corona Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. That, that's all I know about it. It's an additional 22% for 2022 only. So we're getting a total of 40% for, for 2022. And I just want to mention this, is that other... Um, transit agencies that I have talked to, Ross Common, for sure, they've already spent their money. Um, some of these transit agencies are, are doing things at the transit agency that need to be done that they have on their capital list that they're never going to get. The, the state is never going to pay it. So they're paying with their own money. And then as this money comes in, they'll, they'll replace it. So that's just... Right. Just putting it out there, something to consider in the future. We need a wash bay that's enclosed. We need a heated wash bay. We can't even wash buses and all this. Right. They're just nasty. So, so that being said, is there any other questions? Does anyone you have any questions, Tim? Or so I'm mute, Tim. There, you go. there we go. Yeah, I was unable to unmute, but Tom let me in. So thanks, Tom. Uh, Ray, could you just uh, review what the fiscal year 23 is? Uh, that's on the federal calendar. Is that right? On the calendar year. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's from October, October 1st to November 30th. All right. So you're just getting a head start on everybody else. So it's, oh, yeah, it starts. Yep. Uh, in 2023, we'll start next year, October 1st. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, are you, this uh, CCP money or whatever, um, you find it, are there any restrictions coming down? I, I don't know. They talking about I don't. That? I don't know about that. What I do know is once the money is delivered to us, it is our money. Okay. So, but but like I said, these these other, other entities are jumping it. They're 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 spending their own money up front and then right. replacing it with this. But if, if if you're considering doing something like that, which I wish we would, <clears throat> I will research it more okay. to find out really what it's all about. Okay. I just got this. 
I don't know, just before the first of the year. What do you so, think the number is going to be? Um, on the second page back, it's four hundred and seven thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what we need to do as far as approval at the regular board meeting, approval of the two thousand twenty-three budget. Yeah, we'd have to approve that. That, yeah, that can happen. Nope. You can do that. Okay. So it's good then. Yes, sir. Thank you all. All right. Yeah, we'll Thanks, Ray. Hold on yeah. next week. <clears throat> thank you, Ray. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Number <laughs> number four. Uh, first item is organizational meeting action items. Hey Brad, what, what this is, I've provided you the list of the member liaisons for 21, as well as the standing committees for 21. Um, we have to appoint these groups every year, and I don't know that there's really any interest in anybody changing from committees or from their liaison assignments. If not, we'll simply readopt this as is, but this is an opportunity uh, to you know, barter if you would like to get off one committee and join another. Anybody um, have any? I'm perfectly happy with what I've got. So. I, I asked you a couple of months ago if somebody else would take that down scope, but I was able to zoom in on it last couple of meetings. So I'll just try to stay with that. Other than that, yeah, uh, the only, you guys want us, when we talk about the standing committee, as far as the, uh, Claims. Claims. Do we want it to stay on that same schedule? I'm fine with that. You and Ron will be the first three months. Yeah, I think last year I did the first quarter and third quarter. Yeah, the first, that's, first what, quarter. that's what you got here. Yeah, mine's not coming up, so I don't. I did second. It. Yeah, it's just locked out. Too. Yeah, I'm locked out. Yeah, the well, internet's <laughs> down, so there's some of this. Yeah. I can see it, but yeah. You, did you want more? You only got one quarter. I, I'm, whatever, if Brad. If you want to, if you want me to. Take the fourth quarter as well as the third. I mean, oh, I'm fine. On if you, want, you know, so can we change it so that it's done by Tuesday? Yeah. Thanks. For our office purposes, can we change? Am I asking too much? <laughs> can we He's change it so it's Tuesday? Only because there's. So what's Tuesday? It's on Instead this, it of says coming in by basically Wednesday. necessary on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month. She Can wants it, it so we have it done Tuesday. by Tuesday afternoon. I think I was coming in Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It just, it's more to, helpful but... for our office because then Tracy Except and Diana for... have two separate things they have to do. And then if, if somebody is late or whatever, so excited, um, it would just be easier and helpful if you guys could switch it to Tuesday. We can do that. Perfect. Thank you. So what time do you need it if you have a if we have a Tuesday meeting? Close of business. Uh Tuesday meeting. Yeah. Okay. We... I think there's only one well that would only be there's only one change in the year anyway. Two of them. Two okay. Thanksgiving for sure. Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um Maybe Christmas. What do we do this year? Monday. Sure. I know I came in on Monday. I think Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I mean that's fine. That's one, two meetings. Yeah. That's fine. All right. So uh, we'll change that to Tuesday. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the action item, sir? Wait, we can always re we can re revisit it. Yeah. At any time. Yeah. When it comes time to vote on it, we can. We can uh, if if Jen. So if Jenny wants to, wants you know, she else. wants to get off, you know, doing that second quarter, I don't have a problem taking care of that. Or if she wants to do the committee. Yeah. Like yeah, we can, we can discuss it again next week. So. All right. 4B, temporary increase to custodian hours. Um, okay, what we've got here, we've got a custodian that will be out on FMLA leave for appears at least 12 weeks. And what we'd like to do with our uh, second custodian is just increase her hours to 40 per week. 
uh, through that time period so that we get the, the building covered. Uh, we're not asking for additional staffing or even overtime at this point, but just to increase that one employee's hours, five hours per week through the duration of the FMLA leave. I don't have a problem with it. I can, I can understand it. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I can understand that we're at everything. So. Seems accept acceptable. So let's go forward with that. All right, uh, 4C medical examiner agreement. Hey, I think you've gotten my email about that. Uh, LaDonna was not able to be here today, but she did ask uh, a rep from the state police to attend uh, to just sort of talk about the experience uh, that they've had with the medical examiner. Uh, just to refresh your memory, we did go through a staffing change there. We appointed a new medical examiner, a chief medical examiner at the last meeting, but there had been some underlying concerns about the agreement that we have. Uh, with the facility in Saginaw and before the board took any sort of action, we wanted to hear some feedback from the people who are on the ground working uh, with the medical examiner group. And then uh, that will allow the board to make an educated decision about what direction, if any, to go. Please, please run. All right, uh, let's see Craig, Mike Brown, um, either, either one of you want to start? Sure, I'll, I'll lead off. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Brown, I'm the Assistant Commander of the West Branch Post. Um, I just want to very briefly touch base on why a medical examiner position um, and why the process is so very important uh, within uh, Craig and I's, I don't want to call it a field of expertise, but let's say our profession. So when there's a death uh, within our community that's either unattended or unexplained or the act uh, of someone else, it, it falls upon uh, a pretty involved process to ascertain what happened. And, and part of that, and a big part of that is the medical examiner process. And that's an easy way of saying that, that there's a lot of steps involved in something that from the outset might seem to be fairly simple, but is not because when, it, when you boil it down, the autopsy uh, is one of the most important uh, portions uh, of the investigation because obviously, you know, people in Craig's position, you know, working as a detective, if they go into a scene uh, where there's an unexplained or violent death, probably the best witness that they're going to have to whatever occurred is the decedent, right? So then it falls upon the, me the medical examiner and the forensic pathologist to essentially give a voice uh, to that person to try to determine uh, what happened. And in recent, uh, recent weeks, I, I became aware that there were some issues uh, within this county and with other counties uh, regarding the process that had been in place. And, you know, I understand that the agreement uh, between uh, the medical examiner company uh, is, is between that company and the county, but it affects all of law enforcement that operate within Oldemont County. And that's why Craig and I are here. I would sincerely hope that, you know, in any step or any process that is taken moving forward, um, that the board respectfully realize that, you know, the agreement, while it while it's an important agreement, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it uh, when it comes to providing a sense of closure and some serious support to the investigative work that people like Craig uh, and the detective at the sheriff's office and our local officers do every day. So some of the issues that, that were brought to my attention um, were, and Craig, jump in here if I misspeak, because like many of you, I've, I've got a lot of things on my plate. Um, one of the issues that was brought to my attention was um, that they were utilizing um, a person that, that was not a forensic pathologist. And that's a concern from an investigative standpoint, because, you know, if, I, if I'm a medical doctor or I'm a surgeon and my specialty is, let's say, cardiology, well, I've got an incredible body of work and I've got an incredible knowledge base to go and operate on your heart. If I'm not a forensic pathologist and I don't have a fellowship, et cetera, et cetera, yes, I'm still a doctor, but I might not be what the courts 
and what our juries and what our investigative members are looking for in terms of being able to provide an expert opinion to as a manner and cause of death. So that was one concern. The other concern that was brought to my attention was some issues relating to actual on-scene response. Now, when the troopers at the West Branch Post respond to a, a death scene, uh, let's say hypothetically it is a, uh, it's an unattended death, they respond out to the scene and they conduct a very cursory examination, but then they wait on the medical examiner who comes in and then gets the clearance to remove uh, the decedent from the scene. And that's not just simply saying, yes, this person is dead. The medical examiner is supposed to, at that point, look at it from almost an investigatory standpoint, like our detectives would, uh, because they're the ones whose responsibility is obviously uh, the decedent's body at that point. And my understanding was there were some instances where decedents weren't really examined at the scene. And I'm not talking about obviously a full blown autopsy on the floor of someone's home, but a cursory check of the body to see if there was any obvious blunt force trauma or things of that nature. And that's a concern because if there were, that would obviously cause law enforcement to go in a different direction. And there were some other concerns regarding personnel matters um, with the company uh, to the extent that in early December, I requested that uh, Prosecutor Schultz have a meeting uh, with myself and Craig and some of the other law enforcement agencies in the county, uh, because our ultimate goal here is to have a medical examiner process in place that serves our residents uh, the best. Um, again, my job's not to get into the nuts and bolts of whatever agreement that uh, the Board of Commissioners and, and, and the County Administrators see fit to implement. Um, my goal here is to simply express to you how very important the ME process is, not only for law enforcement, but also for the victims that might be affected by, uh, by the death of a loved one. And Craig, if I missed anything, feel free to jump in, sir. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Uh, the only thing I would add to Lieutenant Brown's um, talking points there is that by allowing non-forensically non trained pathologists to conduct these autopsies, I believe they were in violation of their contract with the County of Ogemaw because they, they said that upon request, they would conduct forensic pathologist autopsies. And in several instances, they just simply didn't. There was a doctor that performed the autopsy, but he was not forensically trained, which leads to issues coming later in court because his findings could be challenged very easily. Um, that was one issue. The second thing is that, uh, again, Lieutenant Brown touched on, but I would just add to very shortly is we, we entrust the MEIs who are the, uh, the workers for the MEs office that re respond out to the scenes. We, I can't respond to every scene, every death in Ogama, Iosco, Gladwin, and Aranac counties. I just can't. So I trust my troops, uh, their experience, but I also trust the, the appointees of the MEs office to respond to those and to dig in just a little bit to see if there's a reason why a 45 year old is laying dead on their couch with no other medical history. And in some cases, um, several actually, they're, they've proven themselves to be either disinterested in that or underqualified, possibly uh, incapable uh, or unwilling to even roll a body over. And I don't wanna get into too much uh, detail, but at least look for a hole or a knife sticking in somebody. And, and they didn't even do that. They were just like, well, I. Do they have a history of cardiopulmonary issues? I mean, uh, let me see their medical, their, their prescription bottles, which helps, but we have to examine the body and they weren't even doing that. So again, I would, just, I would just say that I think as a whole, I've been very disappointed uh, in this organization. And, I, and more importantly, I don't think they've lived up to their contract. And I think that's our out if we want it. That's all I have. So, and I don't know if you can comment at this point um, due to a possible trial or, or litigation, but uh, the, do you know the name of this person that we feel is not trained or unqualified? Well, there's, there's several. And, and when I, I throw that out there, not as a blanket statement to all, but uh, I can tell you that there's one out of the at least five MEIs in this county uh, that actually has any sort of medical background. 
And that was just as an EMT. So uh, again, I'm not going to throw names out there um, because I don't want to cast aspersions on those people. They, they applied for a job. They got a job. They hired them. It's not their fault that they were hired and, and possibly underqualified for those positions, but they have absolutely no medical background, um, let alone investigatory background. Uh, I've worked in several other counties um, over my career, and I can tell you that that's not the case in those other counties. When, when guys show up, gals show up at MEI calls in these other counties, they have law enforcement background. They have medical training, sometimes both. Um, and they're, they are investigators from the moment they set foot on scene. Whether I'm there or not, I have a great deal more trust in their ability to recognize uh, possible criminal evidence that's left behind. So uh, I think it's important, not only that these MEIs, there's a, a little more stringent uh, conditions put on their hiring, but that's not up to me, that's the Saginaw group. Um, and unfortunately, we just deal with the repercussions of their decisions out there in the field. Um, but I can tell you that we don't suffer from that in other counties as a whole. The only other thing that I would add is, um, you know, there's there's open source information regarding, you know, the issues with non non forensically non forensic pathologists conducting autopsies. That's that's been in the media downstate in the Saginaw County area. But one of the issues that I've also that's came to my attention is um, a resistance. It has seemed uh, by this company to sometimes conduct autopsies at the at the request or at the bequest of law enforcement, and that's something that that should never be allowed to occur either. Because if a detective at the scene requests that an autopsy be conducted, for instance, uh, on a forty five year old male that died on a couch. The company should take that and run with it because it's it's that investigator's opinion based upon how many years of knowledge he or she has as a detective. Um, that's why they're requesting it, right? And if it if it boils down to a monetary issue, that should never be a concern when you're talking about uh, an investigation or trying to bring some closure to a family. So thank you. So there's there's a possible um, contract violation that we want, we'd want to make sure we can prove before we try to get out of that contract, if that happened. Um, and then also poor performance, denying requests on scene, um, not being thorough enough. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, I and I would just, I think the violation of the contract is well known. Uh, I know that there's other counties that were using Saginaw that are also in the same boat that were that were being that autopsies were being conducted by non forensically trained people. Um, so I don't think it's going to take much homework for us to validate that violation of the contract. Uh, as far as the county goes, I shouldn't say us you guys. All right. Thanks, Craig. You're welcome. Are you, you guys got any questions. Well, I think uh, Maybe they could provide the administrators alternatives. That's that a good point. These other counties are using because I sure as heck don't know about. I think Tim. I think Tim has a couple, if I'm not yes. mistaken. I do. I have two other uh, organizations uh, already on file. They communicate regularly with uh, uh, marketing materials, so I, I know of that. But what we would do, should the board uh, agree to terminate this contract, is we would put that out for RFP. Probably about a 90-day turnaround, which coincidentally. Uh, we would have to provide 90 day notice to terminate the contract. So, you know, timing wise, that would work well. Uh, what I will do, and I'm primarily addressing the board, is follow up on these concerns uh, with the Saginaw group right now. I'd like to hear their response, report back to the board, and uh, we can. Um, uh, you know, just take it from there. I will, uh, you know, depending on what I hear, uh, go ahead and start the process should we decide to terminate the contract. Of course, we'll want to consult with our legal counsel too to make sure we do all that properly. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll just get this rolling. I'll report back next week at the regular board meeting uh, with what I learned and you know, possibly even bring a resolution uh, if that's the board's desire. You, uh, you feel that you have the parameters that we want to ask for for an RFP? Or yes, no, no doubt. 
for anything? Yeah, I've got everything I need. Uh, so uh, literally, it's just a matter of formatting the, the RFP document itself and sending it out. Uh, I don't know who else is out there in the world of uh, forensics who might bid on this. But like I said, I, I have two uh, that I've heard from rather regularly, uh, two other organizations. So I'm confident we're not going to be left high and dry. The question then becomes, uh, what's, what's the price tag going to be? What are the other parameters? That's why we do an RFP. We'll, we'll figure it all out and um, we'll have enough information for the board anyway to make a good decision. Well, I think my concern was prior, Dr. Bush was doing, right. supposedly doing the forensics. Right. Or not, he's gone. Right. And the new guy coming in actually has more credentials than Dr. Bush from what I see. But they so, seem to be having some issues. But they're having some issues. He's not actually he's doing, the yeah, he's doing the autopsy. doing the autopsy. Seeing the autopsy is my understanding. Right. right. So he's not physically doing it. He's basically signing off yeah. on it. So I understand completely where the right. law enforcement's coming from, obviously. So oh, that'd be like, big concern. That'd be like a PA, the doctor signing off. Exactly. On whatever, the, whatever the doctors, whatever. So I guess there needs to be some questions asked. Well, definitely. And if you, if you guys have uh, obviously have huge concerns about using this medical examiner, that's definitely going to be a red flag for us as a board. Um, we want you guys to be happy with who we're using and uh, we definitely respect you two and your profession. So if this is a, a concern, then we're definitely going to uh, look into it and uh, any information you can give us to uh, help Tim and, um, um, this contract dispute would be very helpful and thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And for Tim, the only other thing that I would add in, in his consideration for uh, the replacements for this is just uh, a regionalized location where the autopsies are going to be conducted because there are some counties even north of us that use um, an ME's office who do their, does their autopsies in Grand Rapids. And that's just kind of a non-starter for, I mean, I can't tell you guys what to do. That's your decision. But trying to send three cubs uh, who need to attend an autopsy for training purposes or myself to one or two autopsies a week and having to drive to Grand Rapids, especially in light of the weather that we're dealing with here, could be cumbersome at best. So, I guess the only other thing that I would add is, you know, this, this isn't just an MSP concern. Um, you know, the, these same concerns have been expressed by, you know, the sheriff's office and, and prosecutor Schultz. Um, can't speak for them. Obviously, they're not present on the meeting, but just wanted you to be aware that it's not just coming uh, from the state police. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, because we, we just, we don't know about this stuff. I mean, we, we got to hear it. We got to hear it from the people that use it. So I'm glad yeah. you could come forward with that much. And I've provided some of those names to LaDonna's office because I do have the, uh, the ability and the, and the wantingness and, and the experience to have worked with several of these other uh, pathologists, Dr. Wow. Jaya over in Iasco and Aranac and Dr. Maroney's office, and several up and even in the Alpino way. So there are several out there that are willing uh, to, to join us. Um, and I would just say that I think part of the problem with the Saginaw one is they've just taken on more than they can handle. That's part. That's also part of the issue. They're just overwhelmed because of the counties that they they oversee. Our administrator numbers uh, open every day. You can always relay stuff right directly to him. Very good. That's, that's the quickest way to to the board. Thanks, Craig. <clears throat> Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Have a good morning. You too. Thanks. All right, next on the agenda is uh, 4D OSHA vaccination update. I got a few things under this category. The first document that's loaded for you uh, today are just some draft changes to the COVID preparedness plan that we're still required to maintain under Michigan OSHA. Uh, just I'm going to be very brief about this. The changes that I proposed in the document itself tend to relax some of the strict requirements that we originally adopted. For instance, we had a requirement that anybody entering the building had to be masked. Uh, that language has been toned down a little bit, saying that you know, the board could 
uh, you know, issue an order that everybody be masked, but that's the only time when it's required. Uh, same would be true with employees. Uh, the screening requirements, you might recall a year ago, everybody had to go through a, a series of questions before they were allowed in the building. Uh, this new uh, language is just simply saying the board can reimpose that if you feel it's necessary. Uh, so we'll keep all the documents, all the forms and everything, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just uh, uh, kind of holding that in our back pocket. Uh, there are also uh, issues in the plan about employees uh, being instructed to wash their hands frequently. Well, now we're just encouraging them to do so. So relaxing a lot of that language. In the document, though, I did take a, a final run at Appendix A, which is the worker classification between essential and non-essential. I know that's been a, kind of a sore point. Uh, anytime an employee is told they're not essential, it seems like it's demeaning. I did put a definition under the title of that appendix saying essential is only in reference to the person's need to be in the building to do their work. If your work can be done remote, then we may put you in that non-essential category. You can work from home, but the ones in the essential, typically if the building is gonna be open, we need these people there to serve the public who might come in. Uh, and, and this is obviously very fluid, uh, something that uh, I think we wanna give folks time to take a look at and uh, uh, you know, contemplate where their um, classification should fall. And then also the classifications within the courts. Uh, I've left that to the court administrative order. Those are obviously they're a separate uh, branch of government entirely. Uh, and that would be definitions that the court will need to assign uh, should that become necessary. And then lastly, the last page is a new uh, edition. This is just the latest uh, updates from CDC about quarantining and masking and so on. Uh, the language that's in the plan itself is modified slightly just to state that we will follow whatever the latest CDC guidelines are. So the board doesn't necessarily have to see a new uh, you know, plan or a revised plan every time they do it. We'll just simply follow what those guidelines state. Now, this whole thing, I want a really slow walk uh, because we're waiting on a decision from the Supreme Court that is actually going to hear cases tomorrow about vaccine mandates and uh, testing mandates. The second document that's uh, in the packet is a sample policy or policy template that's been recommended through Michigan Association of Counties and our legal counsel at Cole Stoker and Toski. So should the Supreme Court say, yes, the, the vaccine mandate and testing mandate is constitutional and that the OSHA rules will take effect, this is where I will turn, I will obviously insert uh, Ogama's name where it says employer name and then customize to what our, um, uh, you know, our situation is on the ground. But this is the template that I would follow. Uh, we are right now in sort of a precarious position in the state uh, because if this were to take effect or the Supreme Court were to decide that this is constitutional, we need to show that we are at least taking steps to comply. We don't have to be in complete compliance the day the court rules. So when I say I'm, I want to slow walk this, I don't want to bring this to the board's uh, regular meeting next week. I would like to uh, bring it back to you at the next committee of the whole. By then, hopefully, we'll have the decision from the court. We may just push this aside. Or if the court decides that this is uh, going to be the standing rule, uh, we'll be able to proceed, but that will also give us an additional two weeks to get some feedback from the departments as well. One of the things that we'll be required to do is document uh, anybody who does have vaccination uh, cards. So that will give us time between now and then even to take assessment as to what our current vaccination rate is within the organization too. And then that I think will feed into what we would wanna do with testing and, and how we would proceed. With the testing, our new health insurance carrier at Mesa has a program already in place. So should this mandate stand, uh, we'll be able to use their resources to document a lot of this without any additional cost to us. And frankly, that was one of my biggest worries is just, A, how are we gonna document it? B, we've got to obviously secure it, secure the information for HIPAA purposes, but most importantly, C is how do we go through the, the weekly 
testing requirement. How do we accomplish that? Well, here's an organization of professionals that already has that down, so we shouldn't recreate the wheel. We likely would just piggyback on what they do. So that's where it is. I, I don't need the board to take any action at, at all at this point. Uh, that may come at the end of the month. It may not. Uh, I did distribute all this to department heads yesterday. We will talk about it on Monday uh, at the department head meeting and uh, certainly will bring back any feedback that I, I see or that I hear from the departments. Uh, but that's where it stands. Just wanted to bring you up to date and of course, uh, hear any comments any commissioners have uh, as to where we are at, the, at this point. Questions? Well, Sorry. it's just, it's the question. It's a very recurring question every place I go. Township meetings, road commission meeting. Um, things are changing every day. So, I'll walk it, walk it slow, like he says. Well, my question is uh, on Appendix A, uh, county commissioners, uh, non essential, with uh, um, not being able to vote as of yeah. January 1, we all stay home. What do you get accomplished? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim, you have not heard anything about an extension of that yet? Uh, what I've heard is it's not going to be extended. So you, you have to be live. Well, wow. so Commissioner Vaughn bring, er, makes a very good point, and this is exactly why this needs to be reviewed. Maybe that's just the consensus of everybody here that we're not essential. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they took a poll, you know. Anything else? No. I don't have any comment right now. <laughs> we'll see what the Supreme Court decides. <laughs> you got to go to work, though. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, next on the agenda, Dale Carnegie course, I'm sorry, proposed ARPA projects. Actually, the update on the ORV and there is oh, no update, sorry. so we can jump to the ARPA. Um, I would I just state there is another project that was added. The housing um, uh, group has asked for some funding out of the ARPA, so you see that in there. Uh, also, the just a comment on your first uh, public comment on the elevator. Uh, drew my attention to an email that the clerk and I received concerning the identification of the proper library. Uh, I didn't realize we had two district libraries in the county. And so the uh, summary sheet that you see has been corrected. We do have the request from the Ogama District Library and then the elevator request from the West Bench District Library. And I did get one other request this week from um, uh, the treasurer's office. Uh, uh, asking about a couple of laptops to have uh, as backups in case they did need to work remotely. Uh, I have not added that to the list because I think we might be able to handle that through our regular uh, allocation that we have at IT right now. So I'll get with Tom and talk about that. Um, it's not to say I don't want to use the ARPA money, but if we've already got equipment or we already have funds budgeted, um, then we may as well go there and then save the ARPA money for other projects that might come along. I don't have anything to add to that yet. Uh, I don't have anything either. I haven't gotten anything from. Well, we're going to been talking about commission on eighteen generator. Yeah. We still don't have a price yet. Um, okay. We would have ordinarily met this week. We're going to meet next week. They kind of just want to do a, a one week delay because of the possible COVID surge after the holidays and stuff. So hopefully we'll have something again. Mike Bowers has been trying to take it work that was possibly obtain some funding through emergency management for that project as well. So if I get a figure, I'll get it to Tim. Tim, would you have some type of a priority or waiting, waiting system yet? Yeah, I've actually got a couple of drafts I've been working on. We also asked departments to bring uh, projects forward uh, by the second uh, call meeting in January. And I'll bring it up again at our meeting on Monday with the departments. Uh, but uh, once we get all those in, we can then apply that. In fact, our next meeting, I'll bring you the waiting system and you can you know, critique it and fine tune it. And uh, we can probably wait the projects relatively quickly, at least the ones that uh, are internal uh, to the county. 
Thanks, Tim. All right, next. Was there no OR? Yeah, did, did, you, did you have any ORB update at all? I've gotten no other comments from any of our municipalities. Uh, I do know we wanted to put out one last call for comments. We've had a few that have come in that we've shared over the last few meetings, uh, but yeah, nothing that um, you know is is you know greatly profound in terms of what that ordinance covers. What's your guys' feelings on that? Well, I got township meetings all next week. I'll be talking to. Uh, just bring it back up again. So, Karen, I relate uh, Horton Township last month, uh, what they were talking about. So I'll see what, uh, and, and Edwards is about the same. You could just keep it along. But my biggest thing is Old Law and Foster being, uh, being the places where they've got the most state land. So. And Foster probably because because the it was the guys at the Clear Lake Bar that brought it up the whole the whole matter to start with. So I just think that we should get more input, get as much input as they want to give us. If they don't want to give us, then I guess we'll make a decision on that. Kind of sounds well to this point that they don't want to give us because we haven't heard anything. That's <clears throat> well, it's been going on. on quite a while. Yeah. Well, we've heard from a couple of townships at least. Yeah, yeah. They've given us recommendations and concerns. Yeah. Clacking, uh, their, their whole big thing was, you know, no matter what we do is the enforcement side. You know, and I explained to them that the personnel issues that we had last year was, you know, hopefully that'll be resolved this year with what we approved, you know, so you can have a dedicated ORV enforcement officer instead of, you know, the hey you, you know, can you fill in blah, blah, blah. So um, that was the only feedback I really got from Clacky Township. Was, you know, can't enforce what you've got now. So, you know, what difference does it make? <laughs> it was kind of there, you know, <laughs> so. All right, uh, anything, anything else? Uh, All right, uh, we already talked about ARPA. So Dale Carnegie course. I brought this up to Tim the other day. I, I, I took a Dale Carnegie course years ago, a waste management, put all its managers through it. I thought it was just great. The county has done it in the past. It's been probably 15, 16 years ago that some department heads went through it. There's a course coming up in Saginaw in February. I don't know what's available. But then again, if you get enough call for uh, uh, for participants, they'll they'll put on classes other places too. They'll come up here. Uh, there's different lengths of courses and things like that. I, I just keep to keep it on a voluntary uh, uh, voluntary uh, sign up, but something that would be sponsored by the county. Or department heads, elected officials, things like that. People like that, I should say. Uh, if we talk with schools, road commission, cities, if they they have anybody that they would like to, maybe with them we can talk to the Dale Carnegie people about a local, or maybe a surrounding county, even maybe over in Ross Common County or something like that. They have somebody that wants to, or something like that, or even private business. Because when I went to the course, well, it was private business that sent me there, but there was a mixture of municipal people and private people there. A lot of private companies require it of their managers. I know when Saginaw, the Yo and Yo accounting firm, every one of their accountants go through it. Probably a good thing for accountants. Did you uh, get any? Oh, I just brought it up to Tim the other day, so I think Tim's going to look at it some more. Look at that. There, yes. So, 
All right. I don't know. You guys, I don't know if you're familiar with it. No. Yeah. All right. Have you done it? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. yeah it's very beneficial. Yeah. Costly, but beneficial. It's costly. Yeah. I think the course right now is like $1,800. It's like a 13 week course or something like that, one, one night a week or something like that. But I'll tell you. Well, we talked yesterday about the importance of having the communication skills. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I saw I saw supervisors in waste management, guys that were the quiet type that kind of grumbled when they communicated with you, open right up and just become brand new people. It was unbelievable change that that they gave them, you know, because it's a confidence builder on top of that, you know, you know, you sink it. Be by both thumb. <laughs> it's really something, you know. So I guess, I don't know. You've taken it, Mark? I've taken it, yes. It worked for I you? Did. I found it to be very beneficial. Yeah. Of course, that was 25 years ago, probably, but I, have, I did. I thought it was real good. I Imagine have, how much better it is now. Yes. As, an As opposed to the original I'd book, of, I don't Oh, yeah. I mean, Dale Carney's been around since like the 20s. I mean, uh, Dale's. Feels like Sam Walton, he's gone, you know, but the whole thing's been there. My dad took this way back and, you know, years ago. And I remember him saying how much it, how much it did for him, you know. But when I took the course, probably 15 years ago, oh yeah, it was, it was so. Well, Tim, uh, can you look into that and uh, see what kind of a package deal we could get? Sure. Yeah, I'll uh, follow up too on the thought that they can bring the course to us and see what kind of cost there is with that. If we can get, uh, you know, many, many more participants because it's here, it, uh, you know, you get the economy of scale working for us. So, uh, I, and I'll echo what, what I've already heard. I've not taken the course myself, but I've had uh, employees over the years who have, uh, it had made a great change uh, in their approach to their work and their approach to their coworkers. I uh, not yet heard a negative comment about it. So it's, um, you know, I think, definitely worth our time to at least look at. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Rifle River Intercounty Drain. Okay, you got the response uh, that I received to the FOIA request that I sent. And I apologize in advance. I got a clock here that's about to chime. So if that happens and I have to break for a second, uh, that's all that's going on. The FOIA response is interesting in a few respects. Uh, first of all, we did get the retainer contract that they have with their law firm. And the, the dollar amounts in that contract are not uh, extravagant. But I think the next natural question is how much was paid? So we know what the hourly rate is, but what were the invoices that came in? Also, um, they, they indicated in the FOIA response that they did not have any kind of a contract with an engineering firm, yet an engineer was definitely involved in the materials that were presented at the uh, two public hearings. So again, the natural question is, well, you don't have a contract, then how much did you pay for these items? Because the concern being that uh, once this uh, uh, new intercounty drain is established, then those fees can now be charged against that assessment that comes in, uh, even though there were many comments at the public hearing that there had been no expenses at this date. The third item I requested was the petition that started the whole intercounty drain process to begin with. And it's clear in the response that there was not a citizen initiative type petition, which means it would have had to have been uh, uh, its origin would had to have been from the Aranac County Drain Commissioner. But the minutes that they provided uh, that we didn't ask for were quite revealing in terms of how the whole project came about. And as I think many had concluded who attended the hearings, uh, there were issues with the Rifle River in Aranac County, particularly with uh, trees that had fallen and, and brush that needed to be cleared. And in so many words in those minutes, it said, we don't have the money to do it. How else can we get additional funds? And here we are today with uh, now two thirds of that intercounty drain in Ogemaw County. And that's um, you know, clearly gonna provide them with more funds. I don't wanna get too far out in front of the board on this, but my next questions are still, uh, how much did you spend? So if it were me 
pursuing the project, I would next ask for a copy of those invoices so that we do have some clarity on what um, uh, spending has occurred so far. Um, beyond that, again, there's the, uh, the process is, is definitely stacked against the, the county's uh, uh, non-participation, if you will. The, the district is now established. And uh, so I, I don't know how much farther you want to take this, but um, that, that's where I would be. I would be asking those follow-up questions on what spending has already occurred uh, and then just present it to you and present it to the public for information. I think we should continue with it. Go ahead and ask the, for those things. Well, I think the general public has made it very clear that we should be uh, going on with us. Most definitely. <laughs> well, I think, the, I, I think the whole engineering thing would be interesting to see because obviously somebody just did not willy-nilly draw that map up. Yeah. There was a lot of time and effort put into that, and I'm sure a lot of cost. Well, the meeting I went to out to uh, the fairgrounds with Brad and Jenny and, and myself, what I got out of that, it was the engineering firm mm -hmm. that started this, mm -hmm. not the public. Well, just look at the Michigan State Government uh, website, and you can see lots of these projects going on all over the state. So right. they got this idea from somebody. I don't think that he came up with it right. on his own. A lot of the same names are in those yeah. pro multiple yeah. projects. Same chairman of the board, uh, same, not always, but a lot of them are. Yeah. Same engineering company. Um, this is premeditated, I think, but uh, <laughs> um, I think that uh, following up on those engineering costs is very important. Um, and finding out how this all started is also very important. Anybody else have you got any questions or concerns? I'll follow up on that and uh, just report back when the information arrives. Thanks, Tim. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment. This uh, public comment will be for anything. Before you get to that, huh? do, was uh, Mr. Harrison going to be here or that's next meeting? Uh, he did say this meeting, but if he's not there, I didn't see him on the Zoom either. No, he's not on the Zoom. I don't see it there. And I'm looking at this paper. It did say BOC meeting 113. So maybe he, was offered, he wants. He was offered this meeting. He was offered this meeting, but. It was going to be either Well, I thought he was going to speak under public comment. I did too. Yeah. I, that's what we're doing, right? Well. I thought he was going to make the agenda. I thought it was. No, that's not what Tim's oh, communication is. not even on the call. So. Right. Um, he, he cannot place himself on the agenda, but if a commissioner uh, wanted to uh, put that on the agenda and have him speak, you could do that. But we don't allow the public uh, to place themselves on the agenda. Okay. Well, fine. If, well, if he shows up next week, he gets three minutes. Yeah, or someone can put them on the agenda for next week. I don't know. Calls ask. All right. So on to public comment. This is a public comment for any item that you wish to discuss. Keep it under three minutes. Um, please state your name and uh, where you're from. Public comment. My name is Larry Gloria, Churchill Township trustee. And on your green commission, uh, you guys are talking about this, uh, our government. So I, has anybody ever talked to the DNR on the Rifle River in Ogemar County? I am on one of those committees and we cannot touch anything in that river without the DNR to mention log jams, uh, banks, anything like that without DNR uh, permission. Uh, I ain't heard nobody say anything about the DNR in on that in Ogemar County part anyway. Thank you. Anything else? Good point. Well, All right. The, the whole project scope but it's even, it isn't even in our county. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, it's only like a mile and a half long. Right. It's all in air and air. It's all down in air and air. Yeah. They just want our money. Yeah. Well, so does the DNR. <laughs> Everybody wants our money. So. Yeah, 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 lady in the back wants our money. Yeah. Any other public comment? 
Yes, Brett, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak. And I hope that we can move forward, Tim, on finding out if we're going to get some assistance. Because, like I said earlier, we are violating the law that we have to close our library. Now, when I have a senior citizen and people working there who can't get downstairs, that's pretty serious. So, the sooner you can move forward, we can appreciate hearing from you. But we have already just said we have to do it. All right. Any other public comment? Public comment on Zoom. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Uh, just go ahead and slam the gavel and say it. I didn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting? Meeting adjourned at uh, 9 or 10 05. According to the chimes. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best